Here's our first example of graphing a sine function. Graph y equals four sine x. Now I'm gonna say this, y equals a sine x. Here, x is the angle. We take sine of an angle. So instead of theta, I'm using x. Those are the two common ones you see. f is a function of x in this case, or f is a function of theta. The first time I showed theta, now I'm showing x. A is our amplitude, and we're going to put A for amplitude in absolute value because like the hypotenuse and like a reference angle, the amplitude is always reported as positive. So the amplitude is found by taking the maximum function value, subtracting the minimum function value, and dividing by 2. The amplitude, if I have a sine function, we know that sine goes 0 max 0 min 0, 0 max 0 min 0, and this continues on and on forever in both directions. Now, I don't require you to draw all of them. Well, that would be ridiculous if I asked you to do that because they go on infinitely. We just need to be able to draw one one full cycle. Now, one full cycle of the sine function, for reasons we talked about, goes zero max, zero min zero. I think a mountain and then a valley, from my perspective. All right, we know that if we're talking about the parent function, we finish this whole dance at two pi and we're starting at zero. So half of that is pi and then half of that will be pi over two for our maximum and the minimum will be found at halfway between pi and two pi, which will be three pi over two. Now the amplitude is the distance between the midline and the max value. So here is our amplitude, which I'll put in absolute value. And here is our amplitude, which I'll put in our absolute value. No matter if I'm going up or down, this distance, the distance from my zero line, if you will, is the amplitude. So in our previous example, when we were talking about the parent function, y equals sine of x, that's sine one sine of x. So we went up to one and down to negative one when we were talking about the parent function. But now that we have a four there, that means our amplitude has increased to positive four and we're gonna go down to negative four. So if you ask me to graph y equals four sine x, I know it's essentially, if I draw in green here, here's the parent function. Mountain and valley, and we're up to one and down to negative one. So this four really represents a vertical stretch by factor of four. It's away from the x, it's outside the actual function. When I say that, you could look at it as y is equal to four times our parent function. And anything outside a, f, f, e, c, t, s, it affects the y values. So if you're outside, you're away from the x, you're gonna affect the y values. So where we had a y value of one, we're going to do a vertical stretch and have a y value now of 4. If we're asked to graph y equals 1 half sine x, notice this is in the form y equals a sine x. So our amplitude is 1 half. That's going to represent a vertical shrink by a factor of 1 half. It's going to affect the y because it's on the outside of our function. It's not on the inside of these parentheses affecting the x. So anything on the outside I know affects the y. And it's very straightforward. A one half means wherever we had a one, it will be shrunk down to one half. Well, the parent function, if this is our y axis, goes zero max zero min zero. And it ends here at two pi for reasons we talked about. So halfway would be pi and this is pi over two, and halfway between these is three pi over two. So there's my parent function. It goes up to one and down to negative one, because we started this whole thing with the unit circle. So the graph that I want, I'll put in red. It's gonna go, it's gonna follow the same pattern, zero max, zero min zero, 
but now it's gonna go up to a max of one half and down to a min of negative one half. So you can see our amplitude here and here, our amplitude is just one half, but we still do have this classic sine shape, zero max, zero min zero. If we're asked to graph y equals negative three sine x, well, we could start by graphing y equals three sine x. We know that if this is our y-axis here, that we're gonna have this classic zero max, zero min zero. And we're gonna go up to three and down to negative three. Notice what an advantage this is to just draw my curve first and then fill in the values after it. If you first put down that this is one and this is two and this is three, it makes your curve drawing a little more tricky. Draw any old curve and then define the curve based on your x and y axes. Well, speaking of this, I know this is like the parent function. Its period is two pi. So I'll have two pi out here. Now I've taken care of the vertical stretch or the amplitude of three. It stretched us away from our center line by a factor of three. Now we have to deal with this negative. This is a different transformation. Remember, I said the amplitude will be an absolute value symbol. Yes, it's positive three. The amplitude is positive three. Now what we're going to do is going to say, well, this is taking the opposite of outside affects the y. So if we're taking the opposites of the y, this is a positive three for a y value. So its opposite will be negative three. This is a zero for a y value because it's on this x-axis, so it will stay zero. The opposite of zero is zero. Same here, the opposite of zero is zero, and the opposite of zero at two pi is zero. But here at three pi over two, I've got negative three. So I'll take the opposite of that. The opposite of negative three is positive three, and my graph goes whoop, whoop, whoop. Notice, with a negative out front, I have reflected over the horizontal axis and my five point pattern now goes zero min zero max zero. I certainly could find all these points here. This is going to be pi over two comma negative three and here is pi comma zero and here we have three pi over two comma three in addition to zero zero and two pi zero. So not hard at all for me to find the five points. My red graph is my final graph for negative three sine x.